one does not simply walk into Mordor. The Land of Shadow. Hey, welcome everybody. In today's Shadowcast, we stand before the Moranon and demand entrance into the Black Gate of Mordor. In this lore video, we will explore one of the most interesting of Sauron's dark domains here in Middle-earth. I will be covering the history, the fortification, and the mechanics behind the Black Gate of Mordor. In next week's video, I'm planning to bring you part three of my Rings of Power review for season one of the show. But until then, let's bang on the iron door and demand entrance into the Black Gate. The Black Gate of Mordor was a vast and menacing battlement which guarded the entrance into the Black Land. We find it was a multi-tiered fortification that served a number of important purposes in Sauron's war on the west. At the end of the Third Age, during the War of the Ring, we have a description of the Black Gate found in the Red Book of Westmarch. Upon the west of Mordor marched the gloomy ranges of the Ethelduith, the Mountains of Shadow, and upon the north the broken peaks and barren ridges of the Ered Luthui, gray as ash. But as these ranges approached one another, being indeed parts of one great wall about the mournful plains of Lithlad, Gorgoroth, and the bitter inland sea of Nernin, amidmost, they swung out long arms northward, and between these arms was a deep defile. This was Sirith Gorgor, the Haunted Pass, the entrance to the land of the enemy. None could pass the teeth of Mordor without feeling their bite, unless they were summoned by Sauron, or knew the secret passwords that would open the Moranon, the black gate of his land. In the years leading up to the War of the Ring, the Black Gate was thus described. It is said to have been built across the path of Sirith Gorgor, the gap between the Ethelduith and the Arid Lithui, in the northwestern corner of Mordor. The gap was sealed with a single iron gate, consisting of two vast doors under a frowning arch between the ramparts of stone with a battlement that stretched between the high cliffs on either side of the mouth of the pass. On two sheer, black-boned hills, there were thrust forward from the mouth of the pass two tall towers, known as the Tower of the Teeth. Karchost, meaning fort with fangs, on the left, and Narchost, meaning bitter, biting fort, on the right. On either side of the gate lay hills of black slag, bored with countless holes in which the foul folk of Mordor lurked. Before the gate lay the desolation of the Dagger Lad, the bitter plain upon which many battles were fought. A road running northeast from the west came upon the gate and went eastward along the Ash Mountains. From the north came another road that crossed over it and led into the very gates of Mordor. This road ran through the gate, running south along the valley of Udun that led to the plain of Gorgoroth. Sauron first fortified this entrance into the Black Land with the dirt and stone rampart in the second millennium of the Second Age, after choosing Mordor as his stronghold. 
In 3434 of the Second Age, a battle took place on the plain of the Daggerlad. The rampart was overthrown, and the armies of the Last Alliance marched into Mordor and lay siege to Barad-dûr. After the fall of Sauron, the men of Gondor built two watchtowers to guard the entrance of Mordor. However, when the Great Plague devastated Gondor in 1636 of the Third Age, the watch on the passes were unmanned. In 1944, the watchtowers at the Moranon were abandoned altogether by the men of Gondor and stood empty for long years. It is believed that the entrance into Mordor was occupied by the forces of Sauron after the Witch King returned to Mordor in 1980. During this time, the towers were repaired and fortified. Great ramparts and walls were built out from the towers on either side, and the vast iron gate was constructed between them. Sauron had taken the lesson from his last great defeat and was determined that no army should ever again breach the land of Mordor. The Black Gate was only the first part of his defense of the haunted pass of Sirith Gorgor. Behind the Black Gate lay the fortified defenses of the Vale of Udun. On either side of the Vale lay countless orc holds, smithies, armories, and deep tunnels. Within the center of the Vale, vast armies could be staged for battle. At the opposite end was the narrow pass called the Izanet, which was barred by a fence, pointed iron posts, an earthen wall, and a trench spanned by a narrow bridge. A road ran through Udun from the Black Gate to the Izanet, and then branch left and right, one to Sirith Ungol and the other to Baradur. None could enter the Black Gate of Mordor unseen or unchallenged. Those who have stood before the Moranon and watched it open as vast armies marched out upon the Daggerlad described the gates as mammoth iron machines with doors that could fully open to allow his armies to march forth to battle. They were a complex collection of pulleys, gears, and iron wheels, manned by the huge Aloha, who were chained to two massive wooden beams. They marched along a curved inner wall, pushing the beams forward and giving leverage to open the massive doors. The gates stood 80 yards across, and each door was anchored to massive walls on either side, covered in black steel and adorned with spikes of iron. The two towers of the teeth were similarly clad in iron spikes. When barred, no army on earth could penetrate the Black Gate of Mordor. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this latest lore video about the Black Gate. Uh, in our next shadow cast, I'll be bringing you part three of my review of the Rings of Power season one, the final conclusion of my review. Uh, so until next time, I hope to see you marching across the dark plain of Lithlad along the eastern desolation of